My name is Joseph Weaver. I'm one of the solutions engineers with Zoho. This presentation is going to key in on Sales IQ and how we can utilize it. We're going to cover omni-channel support. I want to take some time to get into chatbots. And so it's really going to be dependent on what you're needing to do with these. Um, the other thing I'm going to cover with support team efficiency, in turn, building that customer confidence. And then I'll go into the demo of Sales IQ, walk you through it a little bit, and then I'll open up for a few minutes at the end for some of the things that I've seen. I do a lot of product demos for this. Some of the things that I've seen are a customer saying, you know what, like we only have phone support. We only have email support or just those two, right? I don't have anybody. I don't have a way for people to reach us on our website, our social media accounts, or we spend immeasurable amounts of time answering the same questions over and over and over again, right? I was a teacher. I've done it. I understand. I know exactly what that is, right? Middle schoolers. And then the other part of it is if you're sales, I'm sorry. I don't mean this as a direct shot at you, but some of, some of our salespeople aren't going to take the time if you do have a chat tool to go in and look at the chats and see what happened. They just want a quick note or there may even be a disconnect between the CRM and another chat tool that you've got deployed that's not sales IQ. We won't talk about that. I won't hold that against you. Um, I was sales. I did sales for one of the big printer companies years ago when people were like going paperless. I'm out there slinging copiers and stuff. I'm not sales. I'm not cutthroat. I want to be like, I want to help, right? I like being able to help. So reach your customers when and where they need the assistance with sales IQ, right? This is your website visitor engagement tool, but it's not limited to just a website, right? That's where that omni-channel support part of it comes in. You can set this up so that you can interact with your customer base on Facebook, on Instagram, on WhatsApp. When you're able to be there for your customers, you build that confidence, you build that relationship with them knowing that you're going to support your product. You're going to be there when they actually need it. I've had to deal with this recently with another, with my own equipment at home. And it's frustrating on the customer side. How many of you have tried to reach out to support and you get somewhere and it's like, you can only call us. You can only email us, right? And then when you call them, they don't answer. Or it says, hey, Leave your number for a callback. We'll get back to you. Not alone. Um, that's where sales IQ comes into play. Let's look at this scenario. How many of us have a physical location where your customers can actually go in and reach somebody if they need assistance? How many of you also have an online presence for this? What are you doing if somebody needs help after hours? In this scenario, if somebody walks into your storefront, you can grasp what's going on. Read body language. See where they're at in the store, right? If it's a big store and you pick up on the non-verbal, the non-linguistic cues, right? Somebody walks in with a little grumpy face. They're probably not happy. You go up to them and you're all nice and chipper. Probably not the best thing to do. With our online storefronts though, we don't have that luxury. We can't engage with them one-to-one. -one. We can't engage with them in person. We can't pick up on those things, right? I haven't done this in a business capacity. My experience with it was as a teacher. I taught through COVID, but what was difficult for me in that case was I saw, if y'all have kids that did COVID school and you saw their little dots on screen because their camera was off, I was on the other side of that camera. I'm like, I had no idea who these people were, no idea how I could help them. And that was frustrating for me. And then they came back to school the next year and it's like, oh, you were that kid, right? I was able to pick up on those cues. I was able to really feed off of what they were doing, what was really going on, tailor what I had to do specifically to their needs, to their requirements. Sales IQ allows us to be able to do a better job at that for our online customers. So this omni-channel support, it doesn't just have to be on the website. When you go in and you set up Sales IQ, it's going to give you the options between these options, right? WeChat has that little asterisk on there. We do now support WeChat, right? But it's not just website. Meta, we can go on Telegram, we can do WhatsApp, right? And so you have options. Sometimes you can't reach support. I just had to do this the other day. It's the same instance. 
couldn't get through their support lines, couldn't get through email. Somebody in a user group online said, hey, try their Facebook group. I waited three weeks to get a call back. I don't know why I waited that long. That was on me, but, but this was instant. Then we get to these automated, these bots. Bots can be a little intimidating for some people because I don't code. You don't want me anywhere near code. I can sit there and I can read through it. I can probably troubleshoot some of it. You don't want me writing code. But in Sales IQ, we have a few options. We've got an answer bot, we've got a Zoe bot, and then we've got a hybrid bot in there. This is where we're able to provide assistance for our customers when we're not available. Maybe we're busy or maybe it's after hours. We still want to provide some sort of acknowledgement that we hear them. And then we get into that support team efficiency. There are some features in Sales IQ within the chats that allow us to kind of speed these things along. Freeze up time for us, freeze up time for our support channels, but it also helps eliminate some of the frustration that our customers might be going through, right? Especially if they're reaching out with urgency, you don't wanna sit on a phone with the voice prompt. The voice prompt doesn't understand us half the time. Is that a pleasant experience for us most of the time? It's like, hey, what are you calling about? Billing, oh. Would you like to file a support claim? No, I want billing. Even then though, that was my pain the other day. It's like, I want to talk to an operator. I want to talk to an agent. Oh, tell us about what you're calling about. Was not pleasant, right? So when you come into Sales IQ, this is the interface that you're going to see. This landing page, this target, right? The target, the rings that you're seeing on here, they can be changed. You can mess with them a little bit in this upper right corner, you've got a few options to come in and toggle and say, hey, I want to categorize them, organize them by this. I generally just use this as time spent on my web pages, right? To get Sales IQ set up initially, you're going to have to go into your settings and into your brands. And this is where you're going to be able to do that little code grab, that snippet, right? And so this is where it's going to allow you to come in and begin to set that up grab it. It's going to give you an option for just the little snippet. If you're using um, WordPress, it's going to give you one specific for that, right? And once you get that thing in there and ready to go, get it embedded in there, this is what starts to show up for us. So along that left-hand sidebar, you're going to have a couple of options to be able to break down. You've got this live view, which lets you see who's actually hitting a specific page or pages, right? You've got a section to see chats active, missed, closed. You can see visitors. Your visitors are going to get broken up into a few different categories, right? Did we pull them in as leads? Are they already current customers? Are they contacts for us? Are they associated with a company that we deal with? And then you've got some stuff down here. You've got a section for other chats and calls. So you've also got some stuff down here where you can see feedback that your visitors are leaving for your agents, for your teams, and you can kind of toggle between what views you're seeing in there. And then below this, you've got some reporting that you can pull up. You've got a little dashboard in here that you can track website traffic. You can see where visitors are coming from, chats that you're engaged in, little bits like that. And then at the very bottom, you've got some stuff that you can pump into here. Canned replies, FAQs, knowledge-based articles. This is the stuff that really leads to that support team efficiency, right? Canned replies in particular. And you'll see that in a little bit. So I'm going to jump us back to this live view because I do have somebody that's actually visiting my website. So this little icon that you're seeing here, for those of us not familiar with Sales IQ, when we click on this little icon, what this is going to do is it's going to bring up a dialog box for us. It's going to show us some information about the customer. If they're a first time visitor, it's going to tell me that they're new. It's going to show me where they're coming from, how they're getting to my page. If I have redirect links, stuff like that. It's going to grab an IP address. It's going to tell me how long they've been on there. If I want, what I can also do is, if I see that they've been on there for a while, I can, which I kind of jumped the gun on a little bit ago, but I can start that proactive chat and reach out to them and say, hey, how can we help you? Mine is set up in such a way, you see on the bottom right corner there, I have a prompt that's coming up. This shows me that I have that website visitor who is initiated, who's engaged with my bot on my website, right? I have a Zobot set up on there. I'm guiding them through conversation because I need to be able to grab certain bits of info, right? So this is where the bot information comes in. 
you've got a few different types of bots that you can set up in Sales IQ. So you've got that answer bot. Answer bot is really, really good for those FAQs. Answer bot can look at knowledge based articles, FAQ articles, and based on what customers are inquiring about, it can grab those articles and say, here, here's some information about it. Zobot's a little bit different. Zobot is this codeless bot builder, right? It's a really neat interface. This is where the part of me that's not the developer comes in. So it's a drag and drop interface. You're able to drop prompts in there. You guide the conversation. You guide the customers where you need them. You give them options. In this case, somebody hits my website and says, hey, I'm looking for pricing information. Awesome. Would you like to talk to somebody? Or would you like a sheet? Would you like an order form with pricing info? Want the form? Here's the link. I dump the link in from one of my Zoho forms, order sheet, all of my pricing info. They have what they need. If they want to continue the conversation, they can. If they're good with that, chat ends. My sales IQ is set up so that it automatically creates a ticket with Zoho Desk that I've integrated with. So as soon as that chat is finished, I have a record of a chat that gets dumped into my CRM. I have the ticket that's getting dumped into desk for me. And now I have ways to follow up. That's a cue for sales team to say, hey, somebody reached out about pricing info. Reach out, follow up with them. Zobot's neat because you have these cards that you can go in and drop and really specify how this is going to flow. Build that experience for them, right? So what's going on right now is my website visitor is interacting with my Zobot. There's also another version of this. It's a hybrid bot. So the hybrid bot is the answer bot with a little bit of AI flair to it. It's an integration with ChatGPT. And so what that does is ChatGPT looks at your articles and says, you know what, they don't want the whole article. If you were to reach out for support and I sent you a link to an entire article, it's like, I don't want to read through that whole thing. So what AnswerBot does is AnswerBot looks at those little keys and says, hey, I'm going to grab this snippet, this little excerpt from that article because that's what they're looking for. Dumps that one out for them. If we're trying to decrease frustration. We're trying to improve that relationship with our customer. In here, I've got somebody that's engaged in a chat with my Zobot. What my Zobot did was it prompted for info. So I grabbed first name, last name, phone number, email address. And what it does is on this right hand sidebar, it's populating that info for me. As soon as my chat is done, if this guy does not exist in my CRM, guess what? That integration is going to now create a lead for me. So this is also helping with lead gen. The sidebar gives us a lot of info too. And so this is one of the neat parts about this is in the lower right hand portion, you'll see icons and you'll see them on the far upper right also. You're gonna see little icons when you integrate, if you integrate with desk, with CRM. So the lower portion of that sidebar, if my chat agent is on here and they need to see related info, if they have deals, if they have pipeline opportunities, if we've got notes in there about them, it's going to show up in desk. It's like, hey, I was trying to figure out what the status is on an order. Oh, cool. Let me pull that up for you. It gives me that holistic view of what's going on for that customer. Desk is going to do something very similar. If I have desk tickets that exist for, I'm going to be able to see what's going on with those tickets and say, oh, hey, you know what? I can see that it's still not resolved, but I do have somebody working on it. This is what they've stated so far. So you're able to keep them in the loop. In the chat, you'll see that I've, I've grabbed info from here, right? You can see my bot prompts. It's grabbed info for me. And Homer's buying some clubs. So I can come in and I can respond. The canned replies, the canned responses that I talked about earlier, you can build those in, right? You can control the language that your team is using, control the responses. You just type a slash in there and whatever hand responses you have, you can dump out. So in this case, he's looking for clubs. Great. 
Here's a link to our pricing form. There you go. But what's neat is right above this little chat window here, as the customer begins to type, I can see what they're typing. One of two things is going to happen. You're going to be a rock star or you're going to be creepy. All right. But it's really, really cool. I love this feature. This is just what he was looking for. Thanks. I need to say thanks for reaching out. You have any other questions? Let us know. Have a great day. Done. I can close the chat. And what this is going to do is, after a little bit, you see that desk section is trying to load. It's going to create a ticket in desk for me. This information, and I'll show you on my CRM side here, what it's doing through the integration is it's jumping in and lo and behold, guess who's in my leads now? Homer Simpson. 